Hello guys, John Stayskull here. Welcome back to yet another game dev video. So in this one, we're gonna look at how to implement a simple but effective enemy aggro system where the player walks up to the enemy, the enemy wakes up and chases the player around the screen. It's gonna be a lot of fun and really easy to set up for beginners. I'd also like to quickly thank those of you who are supporting me on Patreon. You guys are absolute heroes and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you very much for your support. So let's get straight into this tutorial. So to save us a bit of time, I've created this um, scene here with some basic game components. I've got a um, player, I've got an enemy, and just a ground and a camera and a background. Um, just to save us creating a player controller from scratch. Now this player controller here is the same one that I created in the previous Mega Man tutorial. So if you want to learn how to make a player move and jump, you might want to go there. Um, so in this tutorial, I want to walk up to this enemy object and you can see currently he does nothing and I want him to kind of wake up and start chasing me and have some kind of an aggro um, range maybe here so that when I enter it he wakes up and chases and when I leave it he kind of goes back to this non-aggro sleep state. So that's really cool. So by the way I hope you like these characters. I created these specifically for this tutorial. I'm going to be using these a lot more because I think it's a, a really simple way to understand the concepts without getting caught up with complex animations and run cycles and stuff because often they come with their own complexity. So the first thing we'll want to do is click on the enemy that we want to use and you'll see here that I've got a box collider 2D. You can see here you can um, see the shape here and I've got a rigid body component now you don't have to use a rigid body this particular example and many of the examples I use I create using rigid body physics um, this is not the only way you, it's not the only approach you can do it with non rigid body physics some people hate the rigid body physics some people don't but the reality is most beginners coming into unity for the first time are going to be using the rigid body physics system it also allows for like really easy, cool effects like pushing crates around and this kind of physics stuff. So up to you. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. So what we'll do now is we want to create a new script for this enemy. And this is going to hold all the code that tracks the player. So we're going to click Add New. And we'll say New Script. And I'll just call it um, Enemy. What should we call it? Enemy Aggro. Well, you know what, we'll just call it enemy script. So we'll just double click that script here now and we'll open it in Visual Studio. We'll wanna start by declaring a few properties at the top of this enemy script class. Uh, so one we'll need is a game object. Well, actually let's make it a transform. A transform called player because we'll wanna keep track of the player. It's a very important one. And we'll serialize this field, which means we want to expose it in the um, inspector panel for the enemy. And what else do we want to do? We might create, we'll create a float and we'll call it um, aggro range. And we might serialize this one too. And we'll create another float. We'll call this one move speed we'll also serialize this field and finally we just need a reference to the rigid body which we, we're going to be using it to add force to make the actual movements so you don't have to serialize this one rb2d is the kind of naming convention i like to use for um, rigid bodies rb rigid body 2d it's just very simple um, okay so in the start function We'll first, while we're here, we will assign this rigid body. So we'll say rigid body 2D equals get component. So we're getting the comp getting the component on this enemy. Rigid body 2D. Right. So I might just jump back to Unity now. So with the enemy selected here, you can see that on the enemy script, those fields we serialized are now available here. So we'll, we'll want to start by assigning the player. So two ways to do this. You can click this little um, circle here and find the player in the scene tab here. Or you can click the player in the scene view hierarchy and just drag it all the way across 
in. I kind of like that. I don't know. I kind of like this whole dragging business. Because sometimes when you click on this one, it can be quite a few things. I mean, you can search and stuff, but you know, I don't know. Um, so aggro range, we'll set this to four. So what this will represent, the aggro range is will be the range here. How many units of measurement um, before he sees the player? And move speed, we'll start with two. And we're, we'll, we're going to likely adjust this as we go. But for now, let's get this guy moving. The very first thing we'll do in the update function is, I'm just going to put a comment here for you guys. We want to check the distance to player. It's a really cool way to do this. So we'll create a local variable within inside this function here. We'll just say dist to player equals vector2 dot distance. You can see here the auto the um, context menu is showing us returns the distance between A and B. This is very powerful. It's a very quick quick way to get the two distance between two different um, positions. So we'll start by saying that transform.position, which is the enemy's transform to position. So I'm referencing the enemy's position. And the second is the player, which we declared up top, dot position, right? So what we can do just now quickly, we can um, just do a print or debug.log, however you like to do it. We might just log this out just to show you guys what's actually happening now. So this should, if we jump back to Unity and hit Run, this should show us in the console our distance. Look at that. So distance is 9, 11, and as we get closer, so we can actually, this is actually a very effective way to work out the range we want visually. So we can just kind of test this out, and how close should we get? Maybe around this close, right? Maybe he should wake up around here. Uh, maybe five. So I might just change the aggro range to five. So anything anything less than five, we want to aggro the enemy. And now that we have the distance to the player, I'll just get rid of this now because we don't need that. So I'll say if the distance to player is less than the aggro range, then code to chase player. Let's block this in for now. And if it's not, let's move this down a bit, then here we want the um, stop chasing player. So I'll start here, and I might actually make it, we could do it directly here, but I might make a new function called chase player just to kind of keep it clean and it's kind of a nice way to do things because um, otherwise this whole block of code can get very messy so I'll say stop stop chasing player and I'm keeping these function names quite long and I'm doing this on purpose so you guys can understand exactly what these functions are doing um, so you need to we need to create a new function so very quickly for you guys who don't know you can hover over this name and you can see this little drop down here if you click that little arrow and click this button here, it has automatically created the function for us. How cool is that? Um, alternatively, you can write it um, private void stop chasing player. You could do it like this and hope you got the spelling right. <laughs> um, and by the way, these don't have to be marked as private. The auto completer kind of did that. Um, this is probably okay just to do it like that. That's essentially the same thing. And it also generates this kind of rubbish stuff that we don't need. So we'll say if the transform of this enemy dot position dot x is less than the player dot position dot x, well that means, what does that mean? That means we are on the left of the player and we want to move right. So we'll say rigid body 2D dot velocity equals new uh, vector two. And here we'll say move speed, which we declared earlier. That's for the X and Y we'll just keep it as zero because we're not moving vertically. 
and alternatively we'll write an else and this means the else would represent if we are to the right of the player if that makes sense to you guys and I'll explain that a little bit more in just a moment because I think that could catch a few people who aren't quite following on um, as well so we'll just say here enemy is to the left side of the player so move right enemy is to the right side of the player so move left technically I should have done this hold on else if transform to position equals this but what this means is if there is a uh, situation here that we've got two conditions here one is checking if we are to the left of the player the other is checking checking if the enemy is to the right of the player but what if the enemy and the player have the exact same x position um, in that let's say that the player is standing on the enemy's head exactly in the right spot well nothing would happen the player would not sorry the enemy would not chase the player which is why I just did this else if we are to the left of the player run right if we are to the right of the player or on top of the player directly then move left and you can see here I've just made the move speed negative so let's run that I hope that made sense to you guys um, I'm trying to explain it for a, for a beginner's mindset. Some of you might be intermediate, so you're kind of like, I get it, I get it, stop going on about it. So let's see what happens. Whoop, well, look at that, look at that, he's coming, he's coming. Whoa, he's not stopping. He's not stopping, whoa, get away from me. Holy crap, this guy's like the sleep, sleeping zombie. Get away. This is pretty cool though, <laughs> I like this. There's something here, it's kind of, the simplicity of it is kind of really cool. Go away, piss off. Get out of here. Push him. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> it's a strange enemy that just keeps coming <laughs> with his eyes closed, which makes it really funny. So, okay, so you might realize now um, we are not, we have, we need to implement the code for the stop chasing player. So very simply, um, we will just say rigid body 2D dot velocity equals vector2 dot we can say just zero and what this is it's a um, it's a shortcut to writing um, well you know what I'm gonna write it a long way just for you guys because new vector two zero zero right that makes sense okay so we're just stopping all the movement here we're setting movement like move right move left and here we're just stopping it. Just for you guys who want to make a big deal about me using um, rigid bodies and physics. In this code here, you're welcome to move the enemy however way you want. You can um, use um, translate, which is a functionality of the transform dot uh, trans yeah translate that also moves the enemy. You can times the um, X position of the transform by delta time to move it. It's purely up to you. I'm just using um, the velocity as a example here. Oh, yeah, see? So when we run away out of the aggro range, he stops. You might notice one thing that the enemy is not changing his um, He's not facing the player when he chases the player. So what we want to do here, so if we are right of the enemy, we want to face left. So we'll say um, transform dot local scale equals uh, new vector two, and we'll say negative one comma one. So we're saying we want the whole enemy object to turn around to a scale of minus one. So that will flip the whole object around. So we just copy that and we'll go up here. And contrary, if we are on the other side of the player, if we are on the left side, we want to turn back right. So we'll get rid of the minus. So here we turn right, here we turn left. Um, the other thing you can do, you can do things like um, 
uh, to make an example, get component sprite renderer dot oh, dot flip x equals true, flip x equals false. But all that does is it just changes the graphic. It doesn't actually change the whole object. If you do this, everything, if you have a nested child, if you have box, all the box colliders and everything, everything flips around. So this is a much better way to do it. Oh, woohoo, yep, it's working. So we're on the left, he turns left. We jump to the right, it turns to the right. So this is looking really good. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. And the final piece of this puzzle is to um, <laughs> make this guy kind of wake up. And I think we're just going to, you don't have to do this, but I think it'll be fun for this example just to visually see it. So I'll just quickly do that. So if I click, um, just give you an overview of what I've got here. I've got an enemy face here. You can see it. And in that enemy face, I've got a bunch of animations. Um, I've got eyes closed and eyes angry. So I want to switch to this one. So face, eyes, angry is the name of the animation. And face, eyes, closed. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. This is probably less relevant for your own game because you probably you know have your own setup. Um, um, but by the way, this whole project, um, I've got a bunch of Patreons who have been very, very um, helpful and generous in supporting this channel. And one of the incentives I like to do for my Patreon supporters is to give all my full project files and source code, including the assets, to them. I have a folder that I make available to you guys. And I just want to thank all you guys here who are currently supporting me. Um, there's only a few of you, so I want to really thank you for being pioneers in this space um, and really helping this channel to grow. I won't forget it, and I really appreciate it. And those project files will be coming your way straight after this video goes live. Um, so, okay, so what was I doing? I want to make a reference to the face component. So, Gabe object um, face. Yeah, and I'll just serialize that. And I just want to reference also to the anim, anim, animate. Man, look how many different things there are here. <laughs> it's easy to get confused. Animator, yes, of course. And I'll just call this face animator. In most cases, you'll likely have an animator for the whole game object. Uh, but in this case, it's the face because um, this cube isn't really changing and it'll be a little bit redundant to have a entire um, sprite sheet just for blinking eyes. So you can see here, um, just to make it be clear, I've just got a face, so we need to assign the face. I'm just going to click that face and drag it into that. Boom. And we'll say uh, face animator equals face, which we just um, dragged in dot get component animator. So we are getting the animated component from the face game object. All right, so now all we have to do is that within this um, chase function, just down here below, we'll say face animator dot play. And all we now do is put in the name of the animation. And that was uh, Face, eyes, open. <laughs> I think that was it. So it's a bit of a long name, but you know, I guess it, it, in a small project like this, you know, it doesn't make much sense. But if you had like all these different types of enemies and all these different types of faces and body parts, um, it's a very e efficient way of naming it. It's, it's the face component, it's the eyes, and the state is open. So, you know, that was my logic. If you're wondering why I made it. Um, Actually, I think that was angry, face, eyes, angry. And what I'm gonna quickly do, I felt that he was moving a bit slow. So I'm just gonna bump up that move speed to about three. Might change the aggro to about six, just to make it feel a um, bit more frightening. So let's click play. Why did not open his eyes? What? 
did I do wrong? Face animated, the play, face eyes closed, face eyes open. What? What is wrong? Let's check those animation names again. Oh, I used the capital F. I'm sorry. How foolish of me. I condemn ye to hell for your transgressions. All right, this is it, guys. This is it. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, run quickly. Run, 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 run. Wah! And at that point, we'd probably kill the player. Oh, get off him. Get away. Get away quickly. Get away. Oh, we're safe. All right, guys, we're going to creep up. We're going to get behind him to get the magic sword. Loot the treasure chest. Save the princess. Ah! Run, Madawa, run! This is fun. I could play with this, not all day, but for at least 10 more seconds. So this is really cool. I'm really digging this. So that's all well and good, but check this out. This situation proposes a problem. So I've got this crate prefab. Where is it? Okay. So I've got a crate prefab. So what will happen if I put this crate in between? See, the problem is the enemy can still see me, you see? Because we're doing, our check is purely based on uh, distance, which depending on the game you're making, this may be okay. This may be what you want. You know, not, I mean, not every game has to be where the, where the enemy can't see through objects, but it does propose a problem. And what I want to do in the next video, I'm going to show you guys a, a more advanced way of doing this aggro check. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a ray out of the enemy's eyes, essentially, and look for the player. And if that ray hits another object that isn't the player, then he won't be able to see the player. So we're effectively going to create an accurate line of sight from the player, sorry, from the enemy to the player. And that will be a really good place to go with this. But for most, for a lot of use cases, for simple kind of enemy aggro, what we've done here is more than suitable. Because the reality is, depending on the game you're making, you may not even have these kind of situations with crates. Maybe your game doesn't have crates. You know, it's not a, not really a big deal. Let me know what you guys think. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and drop a comment down below. And if you need any help at all, um, come swing by the Discord. I'll put the link down below and you can speak to me personally there. Or I've got a it's like 150 people there right now and um, a lot of very talented people are helping people out and it's a really easy going place and um, you can come there to get some support. All right, guys, all the best. Don't forget to sub to the channel if you're new and I will see you in the next video. See you guys.